Because David is about renewing the king. He's a, the renewer of the king. That's why he's he's a musician too. And we see it in the story. Uh, Saul is taken over by the bad spirit at one point. And this is about the tree of, it's about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's lots of things in the Bible that are about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But for some mysterious reason, nobody understands that that whole symbolism. I don't, I don't know why. But Saul gets taken over by the bad side. Okay. It says, it's from God too, it says. God sends the evil spirit to Saul. And then uh, David receives the good spirit, right? It's like, so it's the tree of the knowledge of good, good and bad. And um, David um, is there to renew kingship. Okay, so what does he do? He he plays music for uh, Saul. That's how he renews Saul. He's playing music. That's what it's for. Right? It's about renewal. It's about rest and renewal. And uh, it works, you know. It's it, it renews Saul, but it's temporary, you know. So this is just so we understand what the role of David is. In my opinion, that's the whole point of that. It's like a microcosm. Again, there's so many in the Bible. It's always there's always many versions of the whole story, right? So there's an example of that. That when David plays music to renew Saul, it's a mini version of the whole pattern of the story, which is about David's going to replace Saul. He's going to renew the kingship. Okay. So the whole time he's basically could be killing his enemy which is Saul he could kill him many times okay uh but he, he refuses to do it because he knows if you kill he's the king so if he kills the king he's killing himself and this actually is not just a clever little thing it's it's very practical if you are the if you are you want to be a king you don't want to kill the king because killing the king is like a disrespectful thing you're disrespecting the office of the king when you kill the king you understand what I'm saying? So if he is king and he kills the king, he just disrespected the office of the king. So the next guy will just kill him too. So he's going to be the next in line to be killed by the next potential king. You understand what I'm saying? So yep, yep. it's like if you do that, you put yourself in a cyclical, uh, like a vengeance thing, you know, like a retribution thing. So, I mean, you killed the king. So why wouldn't I kill you now if I want to be king? There's no reason not to. But right. if he respects the, the office of the king and he refuses to kill him, even though he's his enemy, it's like he's saving his own life when he's doing that for the future because mm. he, is, he establishes the respect for the kingship. I'm not going to kill the king because he knows he's the king. See, he knows that in the future right. he's going to be king. So why, I'm not going to kill what I'm going to be in the future or else if I do that, somebody else will later do the same to me. And I'm going to be the one that, who's going to be killed. So this is just an example. The whole story is, is is about the mystery of the cycle. And David is like a master of the cycle. That's what that's the best way to understand what David. He's like, he understands deeply the cycle. And uh, so he, he does things like he joins with his enemies. And then the enemies, he uses his enemies against Israel. He uses the enemies of Israel against Israel. This is all about the oh. cyclical pattern. He, like he understands. He's like he's surfing, you know. He's surfing the the pattern of the cycle. He's, so think of David as like a a master of the cycle. That's what musicians are, in my opinion, too. <laughs> That's what they are in, in in a way of in a way of speaking. So you're saying like he doesn't want to introduce the pattern of revolution and then step yes. into king. And then what do you know? Like the whole king is built on the foundation of revolution. And then it's like. Rome yeah. or Russia, the, like any of these like empires that you study in history, it's like as soon as they introduce that, then it's like kings they last for a year, and then another revolt happens, and yes. then they're wiped out, and then the military coup happens, and then you know yes, then a revolt exactly. against that, and it's like yeah. just this never ceasing pattern. Yes, he understands. He understands deeply the consequences of in, in, entering into a, a, this pattern exactly and so he but he still enters into it though this is an, interesting he doesn't just say no no to the cycle that's not quite what he does he just is able to use it to his advantage okay and this is there, it's not the only uh, story in the bible that's like that there's also the book of esther is also about that the book of mm -hmm. esther is about surfing the surfing the wave of the cycle okay because mm -hmm. it's about using the, the cyclical pattern to defeat your enemies but not be defeated because when you use that 
you can defeat your enemies with using the cycle. It's not that hard, but then it's going to come back to bite you. Okay. But in the book, David is a master of not, not having that happen to him. By the way, at the end, David, what does he do? Um, he never gets vengeance. And at the end, when he has got his son, he gives him the responsibility. Like avenge my enemies. Okay. But it's not him now. So this is how he escapes it. And he does that at the end of his life too. So he's going to die anyway. You know what? He like gives the responsibility to, of vengeance to his son. So this is actually important. But right? because it's like, it, I'm, it's not me that gets vengeance. It's somebody else that, I mean, that's the whole, it's the whole idea of a legal system. Hmm. That's how you establish uh, a civilization. You know, you don't, you're not the one who's going to do your own law. Somebody else will. So, it, but in a primitive uh, world, you know, you avenge, right? You avenge yourself. And that's what they're trying to escape from, you know, uh, this whole warring cycle, the cycle of vengeance, 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 mm. never ending. So how do you get out of that? It's not easy. It's not easy to get out of that cycle. So that's what David knows how to do. And that's, he knows how to escape um the pattern and use it at the same not just escape it and use it so like i said same thing esther esther is about um uh, using the cycle uh against your enemies so this is what that book is all about it <clears throat> it's like there's a confusion at one point between mordecai and uh what's his name uh haman i think his name is haman mm -hmm. the bad guy in the story and then it happens when um, the king is trying to give a compliment to Mordecai and Haman, for some reason, I guess, because he's prideful or something, he hears it and he thinks the king is talking about him. Okay. Mm. So it's like, he's complimenting Mordecai, but this guy, Haman interprets it like he's, the king is talking about him. So he says, what reward should I give to this man? And he thinks it's him. So he gets, ah, the best reward, you know, but you see, this is, this is where the cycle starts. Okay. It's like when there's a confusion between enemies, so there's two enemies, but there can, there's a confusion. They're joined in some way. That's when the cycle starts. Okay. So in the, in the book of Esther, that's where it starts. It happens when um, Haman misinterprets what the king says as if it was about himself, something about pride too. It's like he, he wants to reward himself, okay? And that's his downfall because once you want to reward yourself, you're, you're entering the cycle. You're entering that pattern. And then what happens is it, everything turns against him. He wants to punish Mordecai, but he ends up punishing himself. And he wants to reward himself, but he ends up rewarding Mordecai, you see? So Mordecai is, knows how to use the cycle to his advantage while Haman is the opposite. He, he, like he, he falls into every trap, you know, he wants to reward himself. The opposite happened. He wants to punish his enemy. He gets punished. So uh, this, this, this is just a little uh, sideline. <laughs> just, I just wanted to give you another example of that whole surfing the cycle thing. Cause they're not there. You can still use it. You use the cycle. You don't have to just act like it doesn't exist. But you got to be like really clever, like King David. This is what my opinion. This is what's coming soon because the people who <laughs> people who are messing our world up right now, they're also, I'd say, masters of the cycle. They know how to use that that whole magic, you know, that whole confusion of the um, vindication and things like that. They know what they're doing. So the the person who can win against that is also someone who knows these things how to use the cycle but in a good way so for renewal real renewal not uh, not the re the kind of renewal they want to do now i'm just thinking about like how haman or haman haman yeah i'm not he, sure uh, i pronounce it either yeah so he ends he built the the gallows right he builds the gallows with the intention of hanging his enemy um mordecai but he ends up building it and gets hung there himself. Yeah. Or like how David talks about the pit a lot, you know, uh, vindicate me, O Lord, and bring me out of the pit. Psalm after mm -hmm. Psalm talks about that. Um, and then there's also one that says that, that this, this pattern of the enemies digging a pit that they end up falling into themselves. Yes. So yeah. do you think David is all about that? today? Is that, is that 
could be what's happening? I'm not sure what's going to happen, but <laughs> surely, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that like trying to avoid the question is just we're in very strange times. That's for sure. <laughs> we are not in normal times right now. It's, it's a, you know, lots of things are happening and it's not going to, it's like, it's not going to end well. And we need, we need help, you know, we need help from, uh, <laughs> yeah, from above, I guess. Yeah.